Hello and welcome everyone to another AI in Action uh, podcast today. And 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 I'm, I've got a special surprise for you. I've got time-saving automations. So I've got 20 time-saving automations that are going to potentially just shock you in terms of the simplicity, but also the impact it can have. You could save 15, 20, 30 minutes, up to a few hours a week, just by implementing one or more of these automations. Now, they, they, they seem simple, they seem straightforward. In fact, they are relatively simple to set up for your organization. And so today, 20 time saver uh, automations that we can plug in, get running up in your company really quickly. But the big benefit, the impact, you will see. Because when I go through them, you're going to say, ah, of course, that's the one we needed to go for. So let, let's go into the most obvious one. Let's go to into time saver number one. And, and this is a very simple time saver. But, but imagine you could set up for yourself a lead generation AI bot. Now, what does that actually mean? So we want to be able to attract we want to be able to target. We want to be able to get high quality prospects. And we want to be able to use specialized marketing strategies. Now, if we could train, which we can, but if we could train a bot for you specifically, what would that look like? If you could just think that one through slightly, if you could say, if I had the perfect automation for lead generation, what would that look like? And that would look like, initially, it would look like something like, I'm going to bring in a list of potential customers. So let's say I've found a list of 100, 1,000, 5,000, or 10,000 or more high-quality prospects from a particular database. It could be people that I've uh, contacted before. It could be people that I've gone to networking events or I've gone to uh, exhibitions and I've collected business cards. I've, I've done all kinds of uh, let's say going onto LinkedIn or going onto some of the the uh, groups and communities and things on online, and I've collected high quality targeted individuals' information. Now the next step would be what is the method in which I would contact them? So they're just there are only a finite number of methods you can contact people. The first one is a telephone. I mean, you could literally say, if I could dial. Let's say I've got a thousand prospects. If I could dial and phone and approach a thousand high quality prospects targeted and I have an exact perfect offer for them, if I could dial 1,000 of them, let's say in half an hour, in 10 seconds, in a minute, every week, I could do that once a week. I could dial all 1,000 of them without me having to lift a finger or 10,000 or 100,000. It depends on how, many, how big your list is and how many people are on your list. But if we could get a way that you could dial that many prospects that quickly, would that be of interest? So lead generation AI bot can actually do that. We could use your targeted list. We could use AI to get targeted lists. So we could generate a, uh, an algorithm of some type or a search bot of some type, and we could get the AI to go and scrape and collect information for you and build the high quality prospect list because we'd be able to give teach it what does a good prospect look like we'd be able to train it and and every time it comes back with information we can refine that training we could upload who we think are target prospects in high quality format that we wanted to go and search similar people for so lead generation can be done by by outgoing or or, or other kinds of approaches but it's also understanding who we are approaching. So let, let, let's, let's, let's nail this one quickly. So lead generation, we could potentially phone at 10,000, 5,000, 100,000 people within a few seconds directly using uh, AI. We could do text messaging, WhatsApps, uh, Telegrams, or DMs using Facebook uh, or other kinds of direct messaging using LinkedIn and other types of of other types of direct outreach, and I'm talking about direct outreach, as long as you've got a good offer, as long as you fit within the rules and the laws of the country in which you within which you operate, and you are not spamming people and you are very careful with the with your messaging, 
you could potentially, with one single press of a button, with a well-trained bot, with high-quality prospects, you could be generating leads and new work for yourself, for your company, every single week. So a lead generation bot, that's going, that's the cold outreach. What about inbound uh, traffic? So uh, let's say we place, uh, we create a website and, and we know we've got traffic coming into, into our website. Now lead generation could be the attraction or the inbound marketing where someone would land on a website, would complete a form, and the AI can take over and answer questions, engage in a conversation, whether it's by email, using a chatbot on your website, or whichever method you want to use. So you can, you can, I'm sure you can get a sense of the multiple areas in which we could be thinking about lead generation, specifically lead generation for your organization. Let's, let's go, let's delve a little deeper. So time saver number two could be lead scraping. Now I did mention that as part of the, the lead gen bot, which you can go down and further you could you could really really get this one uh, dialed in properly we can extract lead information from various online sources so wherever there's online source available and that could be uh, in terms of lists it could be in terms of groups communities or any other place that somebody has got a contact details uh, if you think of uh, sales um, your linkedin sales navigator uh, there are tons of prospects out there, you could generate or create a bot of some sort, an AI bot, that could go and cherry pick high quality leads for you. Build that into a list. And the the, the place where it really can differentiate itself is, is by t doing the lead scraping and not just collecting a whole lot of information and dumping it potentially into a spreadsheet or into a, some kind of CRM or marketing automation software, but going that step further, it can go through a cleansing process and maybe find information in multiple places for one person. So imagine you collect information, you are able to get multiple uh, confirmations of that information being correct. You can have multiple uh, uh, bots or you can agents as they call it, within AI to go and do cleansing of the data. So you can go and collect the data in the first agent, the first iteration, the second one, you can go and cleanse the data. The third iteration then would be to go and populate additional information into that. So then it becomes a lot more targeted and a lot more uh, clear in terms of, of who that customer profile is. And then if you go one level further, and that's to go and look at intent. Now, why are they where they are? What kind of things are they searching for? So, for instance, I'll give you an example. If you have a person that's been collected, the information has been collected, say, on, on LinkedIn, and you're finding their Instagram posts, you're finding their, uh, their X, or it used to be called Twitter, uh, you're finding Reddit, you're finding Substack uh, articles that have been written by this person, for this person, or about this person. It could be about their company. It could be about the latest fundraise or something like that. It could be something interesting, something newsworthy that's happened to them recently. So now just think about the power of that. Because now not only does it go very, very, very quickly, and I'm talking split seconds, collect the initial, let's say, base information, and then start populating that information into a very good custom, ideal target customer profile. And this is an extension to what I mentioned when I said lead generation. Lead generation is using highly qualified prospects. But many people say, but where do I find my prospects? Well, AI can sort out loads of those problems. It could take old customer lists, for instance, people that have done business with you in the past and no longer do business with you. It could take people who have contacted you in the past but actually never bought from you. We could bring that in go and do, do scraping of data and lead scraping, bring that in and, and build out really high quality targeted lists. And then the beauty about that is now you can personalize your outbound or your inbound or even any kind of communication you have with them. You could match products or services uh, to the ideal customer profile that you've, you've built. Okay, time saver number three. What about an HR, HR AI, human resources? 
streamlining the, the hiring process. Now, including applicant screening and, and, and recruitment, uh, imagine you got you got a regular need for for new people and and really smart companies and and this is what i've picked up from a from a lot of really really smart companies smart companies don't just keep on looking to acquire new customers they look on on look at uh, recruiting new talent in such a way that they streamline a constant new stream of highly qualified talent so if you want your business to grow, if you're a if you're an ex C-suite executive, or you are the driver of a business, or you in management of some sort, and you're saying, you know what, it's such a reactive process. We only we wait until the last minute, until someone has left, someone has resigned, someone has uh, fallen ill, or had a child, or had some other kind of life-changing event. They've had to stop working, or slow down, or they've had to leave. Now, if we could get a constant stream of high-quality new applicants coming in, and part of that process is to make sure that we are always at the cutting edge of the highest quality applicants for a particular role, that we are ahead of the curve. So long before somebody leaves, long before that it's required, or long before we've gone through an expansion process, we might have... Uh, we might have uh, have ambitions to grow into different territories, different products, different services, etc. And that gets fed in. That, stri that strategy gets fed into the human resources. And we can streamline that hiring process. Now, we can build AI uh, to, get to, to look through the, uh, the resumes, the, the curriculum vitae, the CVs, as people call it. We can get the, the, get the AI to, to go and vet the, uh, the, the, the prospective um, hires, we can go and get them to do reference checking. We can get the AI to go through their social media profiles and even their reputation and get a really good idea about the person that we want to hire long before we even meet them for the first time. Now imagine how much time that will save. Imagine how much time it will and frustration it will save by having an ongoing automated hiring process knowing that you really only get the fully screened fully detailed applicants coming through which you then will remove one two three four five or more steps in the beginning process and really only get to spend the time put the effort into the best prospects prospective hires that come that come through so that's a massive time saving, and especially in growing companies or especially companies that have, have maybe a, an aging or a retiring population and you want to bring in some new fresh blood or you want a growth and expansion mo move or even in a, in a venture capital environment or in a private equity environment, you are looking for uh, team players that can play on your side and you maybe want to go and acquire a business, but you want to make sure that you, when you acquire the business, you put one of your own people in there. Maybe you don't have someone on staff. Maybe you, you have to hire that person and get them into your culture before you place them. There's a ton of things we can do. The, uh, the number four, this is, this is the, uh, the distractions gatekeepers. <laughs> interruptions. Who likes interruptions? Who likes being interrupted while they're busy doing focused work? Who likes it? I, I don't think there are many people. Unless your, your role is you sitting at the switchboard and you are answering calls coming in. Most of us, especially in the in in, in that creative mode or the, the mode where you need to be thinking through, uh, let's say, spreadsheets or some kind of mathematical equations, or you're doing work within a in in a factory environment or a workshop environment. Getting those interruptions means you've got to put down tools and you've got to then focus on something else. Distractions gatekeeper is <laughs> stunning. I mean, you could minimize uh, interruptions. You can enable focused work on important tasks by funneling all queries, all emails, all telephone calls, uh, all text messages via an, an, an AI, some kind of AI uh, uh, interruption mechanism so that it can screen what that call is about or what that in interruption is about and potentially even answer the question or it could schedule time in your calendar when you set time aside to, to deal with particular things. If it's incredibly urgent, 
uh, you get it to, to potentially qualify that what urgent means compared to not so urgent. If it's important but not urgent, you know, the uh, Stephen Covey um, uh, matrix, the imp important parts, if you really want to grow in your career and your business and so on, you want to be focused on the not urgent important things. And the not urgent important things are the things that are those focused work areas. Getting interrupted, that's urgent or potentially urgent, but not important for, for you right now. So get the AI to, to, to cut back on your distractions. Now, let's look at uh, number five. Number five is, is, for me, one of the quickest wins that you could do within an organization. Now, you, it's called the onboarding time saver. So onboarding new em employees, bringing new people into your organization, there is an integration phase, there's an orientation phase, there's an onboarding process that they have to go through. But a lot of that's just repetitive. A lot of that is, hey, you know, that's where you sit. This is what you do. The, this, is, this is your password. This is all the basics. And then it's got to do with if you need this type of thing, go to, go to Sue. If, if you need that type of thing, go to John. You know, that, that type of environment where a lot of that can be dealt with within an onboarding AI. And if you really want to get down to, into the nuts and bolts, it could be in around your products, your services. It could be... Um, specific to pricing if they, let's say, in the sales, or it could be if they in, in the engineering department, it's what spares, what materials, what items. It could even be that the onboarding allows them access to certain parts of the accounting system, obviously, um, depending on their role. But they'll be able to ask questions on history, on, on other types of things that gets them on board very, very quickly. So if you put them in place, they run through an orientation, automated by an AI or some kind of interaction with AI uh, and you can get them onboarded. Minimum time, effort and, and energy spent on onboarding new people. Let's look at number six. This is a critical one from a cash flow point of view. This is the invoice collection automation. And <laughs> one of the big things, if you don't have cash flow in a business, cash flow is king. Um, Profit is not king. Revenue is not king. Cash flow is king. So managing invoices and payment reminders and payment collections and improving your cash flow using some kind of AI automation. How brilliant would that be? If you could get something in place that knows, that triggers, it gets triggered by, let's say, your finance or your accounting system or by an individual, and it goes into a particular automation where it starts phoning up or, or sending mail, sending messages, or doing some kind of collection process that would take a human being many hours to get hold of people. Maybe they're not answering their phones. Maybe they're not replying. Maybe it requires lots of follow-up. Maybe someone's on leave and you need to follow up later. There's so many different things you can do with that. But invoice collection, cash flow can be dealt with. Okay, let's look at number seven. Sales calls assistant. Now, I did touch on it earlier with lead generation, but now this goes one step further. So look at specific sales calls. We spoke initially or with, with, with um, the time saver number one with just straightforward speeding up outbound calls. But this one is very, very powerful. So imagine this. Your salespeople are having conversations. They're having conversations with prospects, clients, uh, potential clients doing proposals, doing initial cold calls versus doing the actual demonstrations, for instance. And uh, every single call can now be recorded. It can be converted into transcripts. And you can get insights into the different sa sales calls. For instance, let's say you've got a team of 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20 salespeople who are doing calls all day long, whether it's on Zoom, Teams, or telephone. If you could record those calls and you could get a sense of what increases the likelihood of a sale and what decreases the like likelihood of a sale, when something is said or when something is said in a certain way, that the AI would pick that up. And then you could be able to do sales training for your salespeople 
based on the feedback that your AI collects and saying in the entire team, uh, let's say uh, Sally, who is the one of the salespeople, she's managing to close more deals than Bob. Now, the one thing you could do is get Sally to talk to Bob and that would be wasting time. You could get, I mean, maybe Sally can't do training. I mean, maybe she's really good at sales, but she's not great at, at, at training people. Or that could feed back to the manager. The manager puts through their own lens, through their own filters and their own experiences and tries to train Bob, for instance. But if you could get a, a sales call assistant AI, <laughs> which helps get those strategic insights in the sales calls, enhancing conversion rates by simply being able to analyze conversations, by being able to understand what makes the sale more likely and what, what makes a sale less likely, what needs to be said, what needs to be not said, and, and what sequence works best. Even going down to the point where you're starting to look at, because now you've got a lot more information about your prospects, your existing customers, your past customers, and so on, now you start bringing in a total, a big, you start bringing in a total uh, view of, of your prospects, your clients, people you've, you've, you've quoted but never converted, people you've quoted and converted, people who've converted and become customers, people who have become customers, become loyal customers over a long period of time, and people who have now spent more and more and more regularly versus those that buy once and leave. We can start picking up trends. We can start understanding what the ideal customer profile is. And the beauty about this is it does it in an instant and it does it automatically. And it does all of that by then feeding back to your salespeople, giving them better training. And even one day it will be able to assist salespeople by having salespeople being able to ask it questions. Say, I've got a sales meeting coming up next week. It's with XYZ company. Uh, I don't know what to tell them. I don't know what the blocker is. Give me a few ideas in terms of dealing with their objections. What is critical? What's important to them? If they are similar customers to them, is there a way that we could draw from that information and help me pr uh, produce a better sales presentation? Absolutely stunning. Let's look at number eight. This is also very good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I could go, I mean, there's 20. I mean, we could probably make 50 or 100, but I've just chosen 20 today. Number eight, inbox and financial document organizer. <laughs> Imagine having some piece of kit that literally organizes all your emails, all your financial documents for easy access and control. And when I say easy access, that's being able to look them up. Now, instead of, instead of going putting them onto a shared drive or shared folder, having loads and loads and loads of PDFs and documents and things lying around. Why don't we add that into an AI environment? Obviously closed, there's compliance, there's security, into a closed company-specific company environment so that if you need to find information about a particular document, something within the company, you can quite easily go, to the inbox and financial document organizer, as an example. It'll look at emails, it'll look at documents or documents attached. It can look at documents within drives, et cetera, or documents that we've uploaded and get context. And you can ask it anything. And it can go back in this year, last year, five, five years ago, or however many years ago it needs to go. Also, stunning tool. <laughs> now, one of the big banes of our lives email. Number nine, <laughs> time saver, sorts incoming em emails by importance, helping you focus on what's priority. Now, if, you, if you're training your AI correctly, uh, I know Outlook and, and a lot of these uh, systems these days try to sort junk away from not so focused to focused emails. It does an okay job, but what we really want to do is have that person specific. So each person within the organization can and should have some kind of AI sorting incoming email inbox 
some kind of sorting facility that really just narrows it down, summarizes emails, narrows down the most important. So when you walk in in the morning, let's say in the office, and one of your first tasks is to just to check what's coming overnight, you, now you have a summary, maybe a, a, a one-page summary of maybe the 500 emails that came in overnight. <laughs> and you could pick and choose the ones that, that, that you need that need your immediate attention and you could give it instruction in terms of which ones to store for something else. I mean, that's, that's just a really huge time saving. Okay. Number 10, virtual meeting assistant. So automatically create, this is, this is, this is great. Imagine having this virtual meeting assistant automatically creating and sending custom summaries of your virtual meetings and making sure no detail is missed. Now, there are currently, there are, are different apps out there that you can, uh, that you can uh, purchase or not purchase, but you can go into some kind of subscription. But why not build an AI uh, bot or a virtual assistant for yourself instead of paying a monthly subscription? Just build it in, in for yourself and just keep letting it work. Uh, if you look at virtual meetings, if you look at um, no detail being missed, if you think about some some of these uh, apps that you buy online, uh, and yes, they were great to start with. It was like, wow, I didn't know I could summarize my meeting, what the next steps were and who the people were attending. Uh, I mean, let's say it's a sales meeting, what the revenue, how many employees, what what's the critical issues they're dealing with, what are their pain points, objections, et cetera, and could summarize it and send the prospect uh, uh, their version, the rest of the information that may you might not want to share with the prospect, the rest of it can go into your CRM. And now you can start building more in intelligence, more information about each, each prospect. And by building more information about prospect will help feed in for your next sale, for your next meeting, for your next conversation. But automatically creating summaries, automatically sending summaries or posting summaries to your CRM, I think it's a no-brainer. And the difficulty with a lot of the apps that, that, that you can get, are they are very, they're not easily customized. So what you really want to do is have your own one that you can customize and say, when I have a sales meeting, extract details about the company, next steps, their pain points. If, if I'm having an employee meeting, what issues did I talk about and what are the next steps there? What if I'm having a project meeting? What if I'm having a large meeting with multiple people versus a one-to-one -one meeting with, with somebody? The, uh, the types of meetings we have depend a lot on your role, but the types of meetings we have in a day, in a week, in a month differ. So why not build a virtual meeting assistant for yourself that caters for each type of meeting that you have and automate the result that it's going to create for you? Okay, let's move on. So number 11, a recruitment CRM system. We touched on that, that uh, the, the human resources uh, a little earlier, but uh, this, is, this, is slightly, this is slightly different in that what we want to try and do is we want to track the steps. Now, let's assume we've got the initial uh, bot that I spoke about where you're doing a lot of the prospecting for new hire, new hires and your human resources. And let's assume you've, you've shortlisted a number of people, let's say four, five, 10, 20 people, and you shortlisted them and you're having one or two or three meetings. Now, all of a sudden, it starts becoming incredibly important to make sure that you remember and you have don't get caught, and, and most of us do, and, and we're all human. If you can have something that can help you objectively select people. Now, sometimes, and if you're like me, I mean, I've been in business for long enough, more than 30 years, and, and there are times I hire people because I like them, not necessarily because they are the right fit for the job. Now, if you could create uh, an objective CRM recruitment uh, um, AI that manages and tracks your recruitment process efficiently and helps you objectively score and manage who you hire for what position and for when, and also then having the onboarding as well, it becomes really so much more efficient, so much easier. 
to, to manage people through a rec recruitment pipeline. Okay, let's look at number 12, a meeting notes distributor. Now, a meeting notes distributor is similar to the one where we had the transcriptions being recorded, but distributing meeting summaries uh, and action items automatically goes one step further to, to the previous AI um, automation I spoke about. And this is distributing meeting summaries. And, and let's say I have a project meeting. It's one project manager with another project manager. And everyone decides, or the two project managers decide, there are a number of people that weren't part of the meeting that need to get notified, get uh, a particular action or a task or some kind of part of the project that needs to be actioned. It could be that two people meet, and instead of 20 people meeting, you could have two people meeting, and these meeting summaries could then then action the next steps that have to be taken. So let's say it's a project company that's got to build a bridge, uh, and somebody along the way has got to be told, you need to buy those items, the concrete, the reinforcing, the, the trucks to deliver the, the, the different products. You have different departments, different people that have to be notified for particular things that have to happen. Now, di distributing these, making sure the action points have been taken and that those action points are coming back as either done, not done, or late. And some, if you've run project management before, as an example, you'll know that you have items or tasks that are dependent on other tasks being completed. In other words, if I'm ready to pour concrete, but the concrete was never ordered. I can have my entire team waiting there for the concrete, but they didn't order the concrete. So if you could have a system that could start automating a lot of this follow-up, human conversation, as in, did you do it? Was it, uh, was it ordered? Did that person know that that task has been made a priority above everything else? Or certain priorities, did that fit within their calendar? So with an AI bot that can do meeting summaries, as well as creating those action items automatically, massive time saver. Okay, let's go to number 13, uh, digital project uh, product onboarding. So, okay, so you can automatically enroll and assign access and tag buyers in whatever outbound communication you have. So like these... Um, email uh, uh, distribution uh, software, or you could have, uh, let's say, text messaging, WhatsApp, or Slack, or one of those type of things, or, or it could be MailChimp, it could be anything, I mean, convert kits and so on. But imagine you could have a digital product onboarding AI. So somebody signs up for, for a particular product or service. Now, instead of a human being doing enrolling and assigning access and allocating uh, different, let's say, based on the product or service they buy. Let's say they bought the basic plan and not the premium plan. The basic plan allows a certain access, but your premium plan allows a different kind of access. Now, if there could be a number of conversations that happen. Now, imagine you go to, like, you go to McDonald's, for instance, order a burger. What is the purse? What's prompted? Uh, on the on the on the till point by a particular pre-programmed software is ask if they want uh, a, um, a drink or ask them if they want fries with that or ask them if they want to go large now you imagine that on an automated scale where you have someone signing up you onboarding them but you also upselling them cross-selling them or even downselling them so you're fitting them into the right space that you don't have churn. So churn, for especially for the SaaS-based or software-based businesses, when somebody buys something, you want that automated onboarding, make them feel warm and fuzzy, assigning the correct access so that they're not com complaining about they can't get the password, they can't get in, they haven't been accessed, uh, given access yet because it's instantaneous. When people buy online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they want instant access. Now imagine tagging those people for different emails that have to go out, passwords that have to be distributed, and so on. That's the digital project uh, pro product onboarding. Now, okay, let's get to number 14. We're very, very close now to the end. So let's just touch on uh, competitor news alerts. 
keeping an eye on your competitors, using AI to, especially in a highly competitive uh, market, you could quite easily set up an AI uh, automation, an AI bot that can go and spy on your competitors in terms of aggregating news that's gone out there. <laughs> I mean, that's stunning. If you could get that intelligence delivered in a, in a summarized format on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So when you're having your management meetings, when you're having your sales meetings, when you're having any kind of product development meetings, you've got an eye on what your competitors are doing and you can have these news alerts pop up. Okay, number 15. This is very, one of the things that get people down, especially the, the sales people, and that is the, the, the meeting show up um, <laughs> bot. Okay, boosting a, a meeting a book rate. You can literally go more than 50% and higher by sending automated reminders to interested prospects. Now, how many no-shows are you getting these days? I know that with a lot of the campaigns that, that we run, the amount of no-shows have increased over time because we didn't have to send them that many reminders. But with so much clutter, so much noise going on, we are finding that our AI and our AI follow-up sequences uh, are now able to increase the booking rate, the show-up rate, uh, by <laughs> prospects coming to our meetings, attending our webinars, attending our special events days, for instance, or even let's say I'm going to a particular networking event or an expedition or ex exhibition, and now I can set my AI uh, bot in action to make sure that those people are communicated with, say, hey, I'll be in Hall B at the exhibition between 10 and 12, and if you can just reply to this, tell me sort of what's a convenient time for you. So you can start increasing the booking rate. You can start doing uh, proactive things to get to meet people. Okay, number 16, uh, Instagram captions. <laughs> this is just a little quirky little one that, that's just popped in there, creating high converting captions out of images so that you can speed up content production. Just think about that for a moment, creating high converting captions from images so that you can speed up your content production. That would be that that would be something to to really think about, because these days the the ability to be omnipresent across social media channels, websites at exhibitions, at uh, different events within uh, social groups and so on, taking images and photographs and uh, let's say you've got uh, products or services that you offer you can have in action I mean let's say you've got a warehouse you, what about in action um, photographs and then converting those captions out of images so that you can speed up the content production so now you go and you say okay well I'm going to take what I've created or taken a photo of and go and do additional content creation. Um, it's a photograph of my team together. Look how happy they are. Look at look at look at look at the, uh, the what they're doing in terms of work and and so on. And now you can create additional uh, content off the back of that. Again, AI. Look at number seventeen. Short form distribution. So automatically distribute videos to Instagram, to TikTok, to any other shorts. Um, a short form uh, 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 provider, so like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, etc., so that you 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 record the the video, you make a quick snapshot video, and use your AI <laughs> to distribute it. Why should you go and have to log in, post, make sure everything is the right size, make sure everything has been posted and it renders properly and it's not squeezed or distorted out of out of space and and if there are limitations in the number of characters, depending on what kind of platform there are, some platforms limit the number of characters that can go with an image. Others don't allow that. Others allow just a title. You want to be able to create once and distribute multiple places. Again, short form distribution as an AI. That's number 17. Absolutely stunning to do, especially if you're in marketing. And now this is a really good one. So number 18. WhatsApp or Telegram or SMS, you can do customer support. 
So imagine you have uh, a, a, a customers that are all linked, let's say, into, into Slack, for instance, as a, your customer service portal, or WhatsApp as a WhatsApp group, or even just a one-on-one -on -one WhatsApp. You can support your customers with automated customer support AI. Now, a customer could be busy with something. They need an answer right away. Uh, I, just to give you an example, I, I went to see one of our clients the other day, they, uh, one of these agricultural uh, businesses that sell technology to farmers, to people who do uh, agronomy, which is the uh, plowing of lands, planting of different crops, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, things have become so smart these days that those tractors, those the equipment is all digitized these days. So imagine the, 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 the farmer or one of the workers is inside the cockpit of one of these large tractors. They're busy planting. Something has gone wrong. They can't stop go and phone you, wait for you to reply, and they've lost one, two, or three days maybe in terms of their ability to complete their, their, um, the task they have to do. So now with a WhatsApp group, it's a very easy for, for people who are not, not technologically either adept or they just don't have access to their PC inside their tractor, <laughs> as an example. Or if they on the on a, on a uh, you know maybe an industrial site or something, WhatsApp or one of those those um, DM type of tools is they're very easy to 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 get access to. So now you can go and ask do a support um, question, and it could immediately send back an answer. So for instance, going back to the the, the tractor example, the farmer or one of his staff are sitting there. Something's gone wrong. Uh, it's it's got an error code or something's not starting up or something like that and you whatsapp uh, into the support bot and it comes back with a video a how-to video of how to deal with that error code or how to deal with that particular thing now i know pe some people have experience with that and, and i know it's it's something that's in progress it depends on how well you train it and a lot of these ones that don't work very well we all know that sometimes we phone the bank and it says, do you want it? Can you verify it with your voice? And you you give your voice and they don't understand you. The AI doesn't pick you up. And then they say, Can you repeat? Can you repeat? Can you repeat? If it's not well trained and it's really not well set up, you're going to get frustrated customers. But this is where you are going to be different. You're going to say, if I'm providing WhatsApp support or Telegram or SMS or Slack or other types of support to my customers, I'm going to train my bot incredibly well. It's not a random thing that's off the shelf and I just add a few things in there. It's proper, well-trained customer support. All right, two to go. 19, an expense tracker. Now, imagine you've got people out on the road. They are buying things. They're selling things. And they're doing all kinds of uh, activities and, and sometimes expenses arise instead of having to uh, to you know some of these apps allow you to take a photo then you got to go and you got to allocate the expense and so on but if we train the ai to take a, an image or a receipt or some kind of invoice and do a, a, a scan an image a photograph or something like that and it reads it all by itself without me having to even tell it what this thing is about is far superior than having a manual process. I take a photo and now I need to allocate what account and who, who gets me permission and was I allowed to buy that flight ticket or not or the meal or the spare part that I need for some item I need to fix on the road. I, it, it could be a, a myriad of different things. But tracking expenses, brilliant place to, 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 to train and to set up a bot. And then the last, the last one, number 20, is lead enrichment. So we touched on that earlier with the marketing, but these were just like, I just thought that this list of 20 are super powerful, super quick, but can really maximize your time. So let's quickly go through number 20, and then we'll just wrap it up. So number 20, lead enrichment. So you get detailed information about your prospects so that you can personalize your outreach and boost con uh, conversion rates. So lead enrichment AI is absolutely wonderful. 
imagine you are able to not only, and when we say lead enrichment, I did touch on uh, the meetings reports going into CRM. I did touch on emails coming in, going into your, your AI, teaching your AI about your specific prospect, your customer, uh, the services, the products, you, you know, even the people within your organization. So you can get, um, you can get that lead enrichment, uh, especially with service businesses. Now, one of the, uh, one of the businesses that, 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 that I've worked with, uh, for instance, they have to match video and audio editors. These are human beings with specific talent that I'm talking about the podcasters people who do podcasting or doing um, a, a video or some kind of production on a, for, a, for a living, they need uh, a support team behind them. But instead of hiring a full team for themselves and going through all the management issues, they would outsource this. Now, as a company, if you're in that position where you're getting professional work outsourced to you, matching your customer to the actual service provider you know, I'm talking about now the individual who's going to be be matched. We want it matched by personality, by style, by type, by uh, by uh, skills, as well as the ability to deliver on that person's expectations. Now, lead enrichment allows me to do the same with my leads. My the the leads I go out and, and generate. If I have these conversations, I've got sales conversations. I've got all of this type of thing, and maybe my leads are not just cold maybe my leads are people on my newsletter list did they engage did they reply did they ask more questions now i'm able to build this intelligence uh, over time so those were the 20 they are absolutely brilliant if you if you ever want to just think about starting with ai as a team glorium technologies uh, can can implement one or more of these for you to get started it's really a good and easy way to get to really understand how powerful AI can be. And I know a lot of our episodes have touched on sort of high level AI things, but these are sort of just really day-to-day -day things that can be done very quickly within a few days, a week, two weeks, we could set this up and, and, and you're up and running. So this is AI in, a, in, its, in, a, in its sort of initial um, form, but at a massively high standard over time, a lot of things would be, a lot of these things would be expected by organizations. It would no longer be a nice to have. It, it will be, if you don't have this, if you don't have a lot of these AI bots built into your organization, you're going to question, can I keep up with my competition? Can I keep up with hiring people for mundane jobs and mundane things that if they go and work somewhere else, AI is taken a lot of the boring uh, and uh, let's call it the non-fulfilling work away from people who do the that, that would have been paid for the grunt work and have had no satisfaction in terms of their career and and growth. Now you're creating new opportunities for people to to uh, excel in 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 their abilities and their in their positions and also in their growth trajectory. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I truly hope that this was inspirational and it was really useful for you. They're in the, in, in the description down below. You'll find uh, the list of 20 uh, we're sharing with you. So click on the link, download that, and at least think about one or two or three of them. And let's have a conversation about what we can do to help you and how much it's going to cost and how long it will take to get one of those, at least one or two of them up and running in a short space of time. Thank you very much and have a fantastic week and see you next week.